Hey everybody and welcome back uh, to another X-Wing repaint video and today I'm going to be repainting the stock Z95 to match the houndstooth. As you can see they don't match so let's see if we can fix that. Uh, this is going to be fairly straightforward uh, and the starting color I'm going to be using is Leather Brown from Vallejo Model Air. And as you can see, it's a really good match to the existing Houndstooth paint. Uh, so yeah, let's just get going. Uh, as usual, I'm gonna be using the airbrush on this. So no thinning, just straight out of the bottle. Very light coat don't want to cover any details. I may let that stripe, if you can still see it, show through on either side so that I can perhaps use that as a guide for my own striping later on, but we'll see how it goes. Same thing with the uh, dark grays. It's okay if those don't get completely covered up because those are going to end up being uh, dark grays and probably metallic in any case. All right, I think that looks good. So one of my recent purchases that I'm going to experiment with today was this uh, uh, tape for nails for, you know, like doing cool manicure designs. And I got it so that I could do um, masking you know, really of really fine stripes, specifically for things like this. But in this case, what I'm going to do is try to use this as a guide for my stripe. I think I'll lay it down right here, uh, and then mask around it, and then pull the tape up, and that way I get uh, a straight line on either side that's consistent. But I have to put it down straight if it's going to be consistent. So get my And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. But in the meantime, I'm going to use my straight up masking tape. This is just, uh, to me, a paper tape. Let's give it a hard edge here. So I could just use uh, the edge of the uh, hull, you know, where it kind of comes to a point as a guide for this piece of tape, but I wouldn't then have 
one on the other side and there'd be no way to make sure that my stripe was the same on either side. So this is what this is doing for me. All right, so uh, then we put on the other piece of tape and then we start on the other side. So I just wanted to make sure that you saw that you saw that before I went and finished it up. So let me go do that and I'll come right back. All right, so as you can see here, the, um, the tape is on there as the guide, the masking is on uh, on either side of it. So hopefully what we end up with is a nice straight line once we remove that tape. And when we remove that tape, that's what we're gonna spray. Uh, I've also laid down, I well, tried to lay down some tape at the back end here to cover this little bit that I don't want to get paint on and I'm going to probably fill this in here as well. Uh, so I'm going to finish that up, finish this masking part and then I'll come right back. All right, now that we're ready to go, I'm just going to spritz a little um, Vallejo Model Air Scarlet Red into this area. You might note, if you look really closely, that the masking does not cover the nose right here. And I'm okay with that because we're gonna actually paint the whole nose in this color as well after we do the stripe. I'm gonna be careful not to get this on the guns. I also don't want this to necessarily be super heavy because I don't want it to um, just jump off of the the hull. There's, I want the the red to appear as if it is worn and old. All right, I'm gonna let that dry, give it another coat, and uh, then we'll come back. And there it is. So, not bad, pretty straight. And I'm gonna do a little touch up on it, but I think before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the nose red. Uh, since you've already seen how that works, I'm just gonna do it and then I'll come back. See you in a bit. Okay, uh, I masked off and painted the nose with that same red. And if you're seeing the colors a little differently, it's because I also adjusted my white balance, which I realized was uh, not set at the proper uh, setting that I normally use. Then I took the brush and I added some more red details, a little striping in the back, and these little cowl stripes as well, engine cowls. Um, just to add a little bit more of that red accent into the rest of the ship. So now I think I'm going to go in and work on some of the gray details. And that's going to be, well, some areas around the engine back here, back there. I'll probably do a dark metallic uh, for the engine bells. And then we'll see where we are. Uh, oh, actually, act, after that, I do know where we're going to go. We're going to then start the uh, weathering process. So, well, let's just get that first part done. Okay, so right now I'm using, uh, this is War Colors Cool Gray 5. This is their darkest in the cool gray line. And as you can see, I've got my palette ready to go right here. I've mixed a little bit of water in there. I'm doing this whole area back here. And if you hear chickens in the background, don't worry about it. It's, uh, you're not going crazy. That's just my chickens. So this is like a, a, a thin coat. It's somewhere between a full layer coat and a, uh, and a wash. I'm going to go ahead and do, even though I know I'm probably going to re, not repaint them, but overcoat these with metallic actually because I'm gonna overcoat these with metallic I'm, I'm painting this dark color in there 
I would normally do black in this situation, but this is a really dark gray, so I think it'll work just fine. One of the nice things about the Warcolors paints is that if you make mistakes, you can pretty easily clean them up with your brush. I just wet my brush, you know, clean off the paint. And then I can kind of clean the edge right up. The paint doesn't dry so quickly that you can't do it. You can sometimes do this with other paints as well, but most of them dry so fast uh, you don't have time. So I'm going to do a little bit more of this off camera because it's easier to do off camera and then I'll come back. Well, I started doing this before I realized I should tell you what I'm doing. Since this is the hound's tooth of the hound's tooth, uh, I've started a well, I started the pattern. But what I did is I started out by uh, creating lines in pencil as evenly spaced as I could do by hand. And I did five lines straight across. And I don't know that you can see them on camera. Oh, there, there they are. And uh, I'm actually gonna use alternating. And while the uh, large ship has five on either side. Uh, I think I'm, this is going to be five and four because there's really not enough space to do all of them. Uh, but so this is the first one. Second one's going to be on the other side and then here and then back across and then over here. Actually, that's not going to be five and four. It's going to be three and two. I may need to, to figure out how to squeeze one more in so it looks good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in any case, that was that was the plan. So now that I'm thinking about it, I might need to uh, go back and do my lines a little closer or something. So if I do, if I, if I make my lines a little closer, I might be able to do three and three. Or I might just go ahead and freehand it again uh, without worrying about the lines that I just did. I don't know, but the idea was really good. The concept was good of drawing in the lines. Um, and I think getting started is okay. I might actually start over. God darn it. Uh, and maybe pull this one back closer to here. Or maybe I just do one more over there. Well, I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. Um, and uh, I'll come back. This isn't something I can really do on camera, but just so that you can get a sense of, of what I'm gonna do. The, uh, the pattern has a, a dark outline and then a light color. Uh, it looks like white, but I'm clearly gonna go with uh, light gray. I, I, don't, I don't like to use white. Um, and I need to make sure that it's gonna be, the, the outline is gonna be big enough that I can actually fit the, the main color inside there without completely blocking the outline color. And the important thing is you have a brush that's going to give you roughly the, the width that you want as you lay it down. And so you kind of let the, the brush do the work in terms of, uh, getting that shape in there. I could go with a, a thicker brush than this, but if I go with this one, I can actually just go, do it a few times and then work a little bit out, work a little bit in, and it should it should be fine. But yeah, I think I may end up just freehanding this. I'll freehand one side and then do the alternate side. Yeah, that'll work. Anyway, I'm gonna come back when I've got those uh, uh, the outlines in and then you can see it so be back in a bit all right so there is there's my outlines that actually worked out better than I expected um, they're tiny so getting that uh, uh, the main color in there is going to be challenging but 
you know, nothing that a magnifier can't uh, help get done. And I think for that color, the, the base color, if I didn't mention it already, is the same gray. Uh, the War Colors Cool Gray 5 that I've used on the on the back here. Uh, but for the main color, I think I'm going to go with... Um, uh, this is the Warm Gray 1. It looks like white, but it's just really bright. So I'm going to do that, and I'll come back. We'll see what that looks like. So there's the houndstooth pattern. I actually think it's not bad. I actually managed to get five and five. So it matches the one on the large ship. And it turned out to me be not even as difficult as I had imagined, because really, if you just set your brush down and pull back, and set your brush down and pull back, you really don't have a lot of uh, ability to screw it up on the side to side brush down pull back brush down pull back and and it just works so something to keep in mind if you're going to do this yourself you know let the brush do the work so for now i'm going to start on the weathering and i'm going to be using some citadel agrax earth shade it's one of my favorite weathering uh colors And yeah, and so we're just going to use it to uh, uh, fill in the, the panel lines and add some shading and generally give the thing a more dirtied up appearance. Having some difficulty with my magnifier here. Oh, that might be too much. Well, I can clean the brush, dry it off, and wick some of this away. Right, because, you know, part of painting is knowing how to fix your mistakes. And the nice thing is that because there is a little bit of excess in there, it's really going to sit in those recesses well. And if you decide that, that overall it's too dark, like if this is darkened down the surface paint too much, if you want to bring it back up, then you can just add another coat of the base color on to some highlight portions, which we'll probably end up doing. But I'm going to go back in, I'm going to do some more of this uh, on the ship, and I will come back and show you the results. Be back in a minute. Okay, with the uh, Agrax Earthshade down, I'm just going to pull out some of these little panels with a mixture of the uh, leather brown and the warm gray that I mixed up. And this is just to add a little highlight, add a little pop, give the detail some more detail. Uh, it also helps to provide that little bit of extra uh, feeling of three dimensions. I think I might even do a little line here. just brings out some of the detail even if it's just edge highlighting like this there's actually not a lot of real panels to work with on this ship
All right, so now I'm gonna get some chipping in. <clears throat> and I'm gonna be using Warcolor's Cool Gray 1, which is a nice light gray uh, without being too bright. It still has some of that kind of neutral gray look to it. And I think the important thing here is going to be not to go, not to go overboard. And when I do chipping with a brush, I like to concentrate on the edges of things where I feel like there's, it, that edge is going to take some punishment and then it's going to end up wearing the, the paint away somewhat. And I don't want to go too big because it's a fairly small ship and it's not going to want, you know, huge swaths of paint taken away like that, right? There'd be hardly any paint left on this. So uh, I'm just going to keep it, keep it fairly reasonable. And because of the small scale, you can kind of just touch your brush a bit here and there and get a good effect. And keep it on camera so people can see it. I'm using my finger to kind of blend it out some. I do that a lot, actually. I'm trying not to make a solid line right across that. Also keep in mind which which way your brush is facing when you do this, right? By pointing it in this direction, I can keep uh, the thinnest portion towards the main hull of the ship instead of towards the nose where I actually want the most paint. So you get a nice realistic looking streak. Whereas if I try to do it this way, the uh, I'd have to keep the brush tip like this and actually brush strokes. And again, if you remember back to doing the hound's tooth, sometimes it's nice to just let the brush do the work for you. So you can just sort of lay it down and pull it back if your brush isn't dry. And then you get a nice wear pattern. I feel like I'm going maybe a little bit heavier than I want to. I want this to be an accent, not a something you really look at. On the underside though, you know, you kind of want that to, to seem worn. Like that's the part that's not going to get the most attention in terms of kind of fixing. On the other hand, <clears throat> since the ships mount like that, it's the part you're going to see the least. All right, I'm gonna add in some of the base color and wear at the edges oop, of this stripe a little bit. All 
All right, I'm gonna do a little bit more of this by hand and then I'll be back in a bit. Okay, with the chipping done, at least for now, because at some point I'm gonna go back over the whole thing and see if there's anything else I wanna do to it to, uh, uh, to sort of just bring the whole look forward. Uh, I blocked in the cockpit in black again, just using some Vallejo black that I had on hand. I can't find my war colors black for some reason. It's missing from its spot, which is disconcerting. Uh, and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do the cockpit in a second, but I'm gonna put in some metallics into the engine areas with just some lead belcher, a little thin down lead belcher. This pot is just about ready to go, I think. I have a fresh one, but I don't wanna crack it open until I'm absolutely ready. And this one though, you can kinda of see it's getting a little, getting a little old and chunky. And I'm probably gonna wash back over this with Nuln Oil. Uh, when I'm all done and again this is just I think just the engine cowls uh, or the engine bells back here as you can see I'm sort of just doing kind of an overbrush I'm not I'm not trying to reach into the uh, recesses with this because we have that dark gray in there that would be just fine to leave alone and again I'm going to go back with the null oil so this doesn't need to fully cover I think I'll even add some just a touch into this area here Pull out a couple of little details and, and highlight them. Mm, yeah, I don't think I'll do that. Although I may wash in there with known oil. Actually, now that I look at it, I might actually put the known oil in all of the areas where I did the gray. So I'm gonna do that and I will be back momentarily. And now I think we're done. Uh, I did do some canopy work, which I didn't do on camera at all. Uh, canopies are sort of, you know, something you're going to do on every project, so it's not necessary for me to relay all the information about this particular canopy. It's really just a series of three different blues. This is uh, War Colors Blue 5, Blue 4, Blue 3, and Blue 1. Uh, blue 1 is the the real bright highlight along there. And then the rest of the blues are just sort of built up from the bottom to the top. And then a little, you know, a little bit of Starfield just on the one side, the darker side, as opposed to the lighter side with the glare. But pretty happy with how this came out. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's gonna match up well uh, with Daddy. And uh, I hope the owner likes it. But that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I expect to have another repaint video in a relatively short period of time. So thanks again for watching. Uh, if you liked this video, as I always say, be sure to like the video. And if you want to make sure that you see more of my videos in the future, then you're going to want to hit subscribe. And then you'll get notifications when my stuff comes out. Wouldn't that be cool? Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.